My name's Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research, and I want to ask you a question. Are we really putting investors first? The bad news is that today I was invited to give a speech, but I'll not be giving a speech. Instead, I will be telling a story. This is a story of Dave, born in 1934, and there he is, and there he grew. Some things to know about Dave. He has no interest in finance. The stock market bores him to tears. And he'd rather be playing golf or taking selfies like the one in this picture. Now, I want you to think about professionals, financial professionals and others. There's always a knowledge gap. You can't expect everyone to know everything, right? People build specialized knowledge. There's naturally a knowledge gap between the professionals and their clients. Consider the following two professions, an engineer, a doctor. They both have specialized knowledge. The gap between the professional engineer and doctor in this case and the client will always exist. We'll never have their depth of knowledge in being a doctor, but we can count on them to apply that knowledge to help us. Most importantly, we count on them to live by their code of ethics and to put our interests first and to not take advantage of that knowledge gap. A doctor could overcharge you and could rip you off and you never know. Now, despite Dave's lack of interest, he still needs to take care of his finances and there he is trying to climb up a hill. Dave needs a financial professional like you to plan for his financial future. He needs your knowledge and experience. And don't count on Dave to close that knowledge gap, just like a doctor would not expect that of her patients. Well, congratulations. Everyone in this audience has developed expertise in finance. You're a leading financial professional. To put investors first means to understand the knowledge gap and never take advantage of it. Professionals like us must can make a fair profit and a legitimate profit from that knowledge gap. That's why we studied to such depth. But when we put our our own interests first, we make what I call a betrayal profit. That profit came from betraying the client's trust. Now, a financial professional should put client's interests first. An unethical professional would put his own or his company's interests first. But you are a financial and ethical financial professional. So today, I challenge you to commit to the highest ethical standards and expect the same of the other people sitting right next to you. So are we really putting investors first? To make sure that you can always answer that question with a yes, today I'll encourage you to repeat something rather corny but helpful. Are you ready? Care for clients as you would your mother. Corny, right? Yeah. Let's continue the story. Dave meets Kathy. A happy young man with a bright future meets a lovely young lady. It's 1958 and they get married. Dave's financial commitments begin. He wants to build a successful career and family life. And he wants to become the person his wife and future kids can rely on. And he will need for financial professionals like you and me to achieve that. Good news. I will now show you six tools that CFA Institute provides to us CFA charter holders and members to do this job very well. So the first one is a statement of investor rights. Another document that we can give to our clients to help them realize their rights. The integrity list, the asset manager code, elements of an investment policy statement, and GIPS. Global Investment Performance Standards. Those are the six that we have at our disposal. There's many more, but we're going to focus on those. Now let's continue. It's 1965 and Dave finishes his education. He earns a PhD in chemistry and gets the job of a lifetime at DuPont. In the same year, he has his third child, his only son. Dave wants to go forward and build a career, buy a house, put his kids through university, and eventually retire. But to do this, he needs you because he knows nothing about finance and he has no interest in learning it. Now back to our story, it's family time. Dave and Kathy have a growing family. They'll need to set and start to plan and follow a financial plan. It's their interest that the financial professional should keep in mind. 
Now it's time for Dave and Kathy to buy their first house. This is their first major financial decision. What price should they pay? How much should they put down? What mortgage should they get? Their financial professionals should always keep Dave and Kathy's interest in mind. So let's look at the statement of investor rights. The foundational statement of, of investor rights is client first. That's the number one. So these investor rights keep you client focused. Now, financial professionals should put the clients first. What does it mean? Your client's financial interests take precedence over yours and your company's. Care for clients as you would your mother. Now, we have a colorful family life. They're a family now, and Dave, if Dave's financial professional is unethical and makes big mistakes in this early stages of his investing, he could destroy the whole family's future. Now, let's look at the second part of the statement of investor rights, and that's good conduct. What does it mean? It means that you should be honest, competent, and exhibit ethical conduct that complies with applicable laws. Provide transparency and forthrightness in your communication. Care for clients as you would your mother. Good news for Dave and Kathy. Back in 1965, U.S. companies such as DuPont helped their employees take care of their financial needs. Dave still needs to make decisions, but the company helps guide him through those. In addition, the company has a defined benefit plan, so the employees don't have to worry much about their pensions. Dave and Kathy can relax. Unfortunately, there's bad news for most young people today. Companies have handed the financial planning and investing tasks to employees. Therefore, ethical financial professionals like you are more important than ever. Investor rights keep you client-focused. Let's look at the next one, fair treatment. So financial professionals should give clients fair treatment. This means that you do not give one client privileged access to your services. Of course, fair doesn't always mean equal. Different clients have different objectives and different risk tolerances, resulting in very different investment portfolio and investment outcomes. Care for clients as you would your mother. Time for Dave and Kathy to spend on education. Their first daughter in the middle there graduates from high school. Unethical financial professionals would have made it hard for Dave and Kathy to put this daughter through college. Investor rights keep you client focused. Let's look at the next one, clear communication. Financial professionals should provide clear communication. To understand the performance of a financial product, a client must be able to understand the information provided by the financial professional or the firm. So you must communicate with clients, electronic, written, verbal, or otherwise, in a way that makes sense to the client. Remember, the knowledge gap. Do your best to make the information clear to your client. Care for clients as you would your mother. Now the family's growing up. Education costs are rising. Now comes the cost of education for the two remaining kids. Let's move on to the next thing because investor rights keep you client focused. This is revealing con conflicts. And what you'll see, I call the bottom five or the bottom four principles, our core principles. Now we're moving on to things related to our actions, revealing conflicts. So what does it mean? Your advice to clients should be based solely on the benefits to them. Do not base your advice on your professional or personal interests. Care for clients as you would your mother and reveal any conflicts of interest. Dave and Kathy meet Larry. Kathy was listening to the radio one day and heard a man named Larry Carroll in North Carolina talking about investing. His message resonated with her, so she sent Dave to see if Larry could help with their financial needs as retirement approached. Dave's hair is graying and the kids are growing up. Thanks to responsible advice, Dave is able to retire at 60. Let's look at the next one on the statement of investor rights, and that is protecting privacy. Financial professionals should protect the privacy of their clients regarding the personal information as well as financial information. And remember that only the financial professionals and staff directly involved in the investment decision making or reporting process should have access to this information. Protect it. Why? Because we care for clients as you would your mother. Happy family. Dave has reached a level of financial success. 
He and Kathy are enjoying a happy retirement. Their kids all have happy lives and families and support themselves. Let's look at the next one, which is document your actions. So first we looked at principles. Now I'm looking at actions. Reveal conflicts, protect privacy, and document your actions. Financial professionals should document their actions, and that means to make readily available all information given to your client, all products discussed with and offered to your client, any decisions that have the potential to affect or have affected your client's finances, even the decisions related to no answers. Care for clients as you would your mother. Dave and Kathy grow closer and love grows deeper. Great financial advice has helped Dave and Kathy spend 22 happy years in retirement. Wow, that's amazing. They are doing the things they have always wanted to do. Most importantly to them, they are not a burden on their kids. Do you think their retirement would have been filled with happiness if they had continuously had issues, financial issues, due to bad advice from unethical professionals? They wouldn't have this happiness. So let's talk about advice. Good advice from financial professionals. You should base your decisions on thorough analysis of the products and services that may be used to meet your client's needs. Carefully considered and supported judgments that match products and service with your client's needs and circumstances. Why? Because care for clients as you would your mother. 58 years of marriage with age comes more complex financial needs. Dave's financial professional, uh, financial professional must give suitable advice that's based on Dave and Kathy's changing needs. For example, as clients age, healthcare costs will usually rise. Now let's look at suitability. Financial professionals should give suitable advice. In other words, you should really know your clients, not just on paper, not just from KYC or I like to say CYA. You know what that means. Rather, from a human, from a real-life perspective, as if the client were your mother. So say it with me. Care for clients as you would your mother. More than 22 years of comfortable retirement. Last July 2016, Dave, my dad, had a cup of coffee with me, enjoying his happy retirement in Charlotte, North Carolina. Throughout his life, he's received good financial advice, charged at fair fees. His financial professionals have put his interests first. It's a happy day. Let's look at the last component, fair fees. It's your responsibility to make sure all fees and costs charged to your clients are clear, fair, and reasonable. And remember that clients have the right to fully understand the expenses they are paying for investment services and products. Even for financial products as simple as a checking account. Care for clients as you would your mother. Larry and Kelly help dad keep his financial affairs in order. And there's a picture I took of dad on one of many trips to their office to review dad's financial position. You remember this picture? What I didn't tell you was this was my, la my father's last day on earth. My story of Dave's life ends here. But things got worse for our family. Kathy, my mom, was recovering from a stroke at a rehabilitation hospital in North Carolina. We lost my oldest sister to cancer in 1998. And with the loss of my father, our family of five was now three. Mom, my sister Sharon, and me. We smiled through the tears. But times were tough. However, there's some good news at the end of this story. Because Larry and Kelly put their clients, my parents, interests first, they cared for clients as they would their mother. My mom has steadily recovered with me at my home in Bangkok, Thailand. Thanks to ethical financial professionals, mom and dad did not have to worry about retirement. And their wish of never being a financial burden on their kids has come true. Today, through the story of Dave and my family, you've learned the 10 parts 
of the CFA Institute Statement of Investor Rights in this table. Now, I will close with eight words for you, and I want you to say them with me. Are you ready? Care for clients as you would your mother. <laughs>